guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe Vintage Style Filmation, Man at Arms, Beast Man, Tila, and Robot He Man. It's Vintage Wave 2 from Super 7. These are a lot of fun, especially if you are a fan of the vintage Masters of the Universe toy line, because Super 7 has been producing brand new retro-styled action figures based on the appearances from the Filmation cartoon series. And this new wave here gives us some great new vintage offerings where they're decoed to look a little bit more like their animated counterparts. For example, we now have Man at Arms in the vintage style with a mustache. How about that? That's something that we never got in the 80s. Now I love the packaging on these figures because it looks just like the original Masses of the Universe toy packaging from the 80s, complete with that beautiful red rock bursting there and what looks like a mini comic behind the figures. Uh, this is of course just a little print, but it just looks like a really great overall package. It has a nice yellow as seen on TV blurb on there to let you know these are from the cartoon series. And even the backs of the packaging do a really great job of looking like the original line. So we've got some brand new gorgeous artwork up at the top of the packages there that looks a lot like what we would have saw on the vintage Masters of the Universe toys. And we even have a cross sell underneath that showing off some of the other figures that have been offered under Super 7's retro line and we've got the cool little blurb showing us the action feature which with all of them is just turn the waist for a power punch it's really cool stuff but the artwork here is absolutely fantastic I can totally see why fans would want to leave these in the packaging because they're so so very cool but that's not what we're gonna do no my friends we're gonna open these up right now and get a closer look at them all right, so we've got our new retro inspired figures outside of the packaging, but before we go any further into looking at the figures themselves, let's take a look at those little art cards that were behind the figures in the packages. Each of these uh, little art cards here has artwork based on the designs from the original cartoon series, but it is brand new art. Uh, some of these by artist Emiliano Santalucia and some by Eamon O'Donohue. So we got Man at Arms, Robot He-Man, Tila, and Beast Man. And then the back of the cards are very cool. Uh, just like we saw with the last round of vintage figures, we got these great little from toy to tune things um, that basically show the inspiration here of the original action figure building up to the cartoon. So as you can see here, we got Beast Man. We got one of his first animated appearances, which is from the early Castle Grayskull toy commercial, which was also by Filmation, and then his final Filmation appearance. Um, and this is really cool. So you can see the evolution of the original toy through animation to the new toy based on the animation. It's a really interesting cycle there. Um, so it's the same thing with all the cards. We got Tila as a toy from the Castle Grayskull commercial Filmation cartoon series. Robot He-Man, we've just got an image of him from the Filmation cartoon series. Very short-lived character, of course. And then again with Man at Arms, which is very cool. You can see too that early Castle Grayskull commercial, they were so much more detailed, much more like the toys. You can see why they would have had to make it a little more basic for a full-time animated show. But these are great. I love Love these little art cards it's just a fun little bonus included with each of the figures so figures themselves do stand right there about five and a half inches nice 5.5 exactly as we would expect from the vintage masters of the universe line and let's go and take a look at these guys one by one so why don't we kick things off with beast man here so he definitely has much more of that cartoon appearance going on here he's very very bright very vibrant and very smooth and shiny um you can see that the plastic is still that very shiny plastic that we We've seen on a lot of the recent Super 7 figures. Uh, my studio lights are really, really reflecting off of him here. Uh, but also, since he's more based on that cartoon series, he's lacking a lot of the fur details, which I admit makes him look a little strange. Now, I get it. He didn't have a lot of that scruffy look in the cartoon, and that's what they're going for here. But man, I'm so used to the vintage Beastman figure having the fur sculpted on that this does make him look a little strange. He's got boots on instead of the bare feet, uh, but otherwise, really cool design here. So the articulation is exactly what you'd expect. Now the head does hit the uh, uh, piece of his armor that goes around his head a little bit, so it is gonna hinder that articulation just a bit. The arms move up and down and they're very tight there at the shoulders. Uh, he does have these extra arm pieces that 
to fall off pretty easy. That's because they just kind of fit there around his biceps. Uh, they're also removable, so they work much like the vintage figures there. You can see they've just got those little tabs there, so you can actually pop those off if you want to and pop it back on, uh, and the same with the armor itself there. He does turn at the waist and he's got the spring-loaded power punch, just like the vintage figures. It actually works out really well there too. And then the legs have these little hinge joints in them, which is what we've been seeing on the Super 7 figures there. Um, it works pretty good on Beastman here. It looks like the joints are working pretty good. I will say that he feels a little looser than like the Hero and the Eldor that I just recently did a video on. Those felt a lot more tight than this one. Um, it does seem to function fine. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break, so that's good. Um, and he does stand just fine. You just got to find the right pose and there you go. So he comes with two accessories. First of all, he does have a whip, which is very much like the whip that came with the vintage toy, although the cord is a lot thicker on this one, um, but it's held the same way. It's got this little like extra handle there that fits into his hand, uh, which is really, really great. And then he also comes with this extra accessory, which is this little golden amulet. Um, now this is a filmation inspired accessory. I believe this comes from the episode Orko's Return. Uh, it's a little more oval shaped than the one in that episode. That one was much more round, but the design of it looks the same. So I think that's the same one. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it's a neat little filmation inspired artifact that you can put around Beastman's neck. All right, so let's move on over to Man at Arms. Now this is a pretty cool figure to get in the vintage style because if you grew up as a fan of the Filmation cartoon, like me, you probably wondered why your man-at-arms action figure never had a mustache. Well, have no fear, my friends. We now have a 5.5 man-at-arms figure with a mustache. And I know that's not going to be for everybody, but I think it's pretty rad. That's some good stuff right there. Um, overall, he's a great looking figure. You can see he does also have the armor on both arms. Um, doesn't have leg armor, but instead just has the sculpted armor right there above the boots. The plastic used on the green is also that very, very glossy, shiny plastic. However, the armor and the entire head sculpt is flat based. So it does look a little strange because his body's very shiny and then he's got like a flat face and a flat helmet there. Um, so it doesn't have that same shine to it. But Otherwise, the paint looks real clean on this guy and he looks pretty nice. So the head can turn left and right, arms up and down. He's also got the nice waist twist power punch and the articulation seems like it's pretty good on his legs. You can see they hinge outwards in, they kind of swivel around there. They don't feel too fragile. You can see I'm kind of, I'm kind of being a little forceful there and it doesn't look like it's breaking or anything. So that's good because we've definitely had some of these with much more fragile joints before and he stands up just fine on his own. And he comes with an accessory in the form of his club. It's the same kind of club mace, uh, like we saw in the cartoon series, which of course is bigger and also much less detailed than the club that came with the vintage toy. And then uh, he also comes with a second accessory, which is another filmation inspired accessory in the form of the stasis ray. Um, so this comes out of the cartoon and we also got it in Masters of the Universe Classics with our filmation man at arms figure. So now we've got a smaller version for the 5.5s. The only thing that's weird about it is because of the way the figures are designed, he can't actually do the two handed hold on there. It's a bit strange, but otherwise it's pretty cool to get an extra accessory. All right, so that is gonna bring us to Tila, a nice filmation inspired Tila. So this is really cool because the overall design is exactly like the Tila action figure from the vintage toy line. However, all of her details are now inspired by her look from the filmation cartoon series. And almost at first glance, it doesn't seem like it's much different, but I'll show you comparison time in just a bit. I think the head sculpt on this one is beautiful. In fact, I think the head sculpt on this is much better than the head sculpt on the Filmation Masters of the Universe Classics uh, Tila figure. Um, honestly, I don't know if it's the sculpting as well as the paint. Um, the paint just looks a lot better on this one probably than it did on that one, but it's a beautiful looking figure there. Uh, she does have kind of that high gloss still going on, especially uh, with her armor that she's wearing there and all of the skin tone on there. Um, and it's worth noting that her stance is a little strange because she does have to kind of have this wide stance because of the way her feet are sculpted there. So in order for her feet to be flat, you do have to kind of stand her in this almost action pose and it's still very hard to keep her balanced. Like I, I can do it, but as you can see right now, I'm, I'm having some troubles. There you go, ah, there we go. Now, oh, and she's down. So this figure does not stand very well. Um, here, I got her up. Okay, so she comes with two accessories. She's got a shield 
and a sword. So this is like her filmation inspired sword there. Uh, it's pretty great. So you can put that in her right hand. Uh, it's a bit big, it seems. Um, and then you've got the shield as well, which just kind of has like that classic clip on there. Now worth noting, both of these weapons are very hard plastic. They're actually kind of brittle feeling, especially this shield. Um, so the clip, I'm a little worried about the clip breaking at some point. Um, you know, the, the shield clips on the vintage figures were a lot softer, so they were more pliable, had more flex to it. This doesn't have any give, so I would be careful with the shield. You definitely don't want to break it. However, she looks pretty great when armed up with that sword and shield there. And that's gonna bring us to Robot He-Man, which is such a great idea for an action figure. So this guy had a very brief appearance in the show. This is essentially your cartoon version of Faker without his faceplate there. Robot built by Man at Arms, who, you know, didn't stay good for very long, um, but really cool looking. So he uses the exact same body as He-Man. He's just as shiny as before. I also have some, I don't know if it comes out really good, but the plastic definitely has some weird kind of swirls and stuff in there. It's It's got some imperfections on there. That might just be with mine. Um, but otherwise, it seems like everything about this is the same as the He-Man figure with the exception of the head sculpt there, which is just that awesome robot head sculpt with the bulging eyes. I think it's really, really fun. Um, so he comes with a shield, which by the way, just like with He-Man's, it comes apart for some reason. I don't really know why it does that. I don't feel like it should, but it does. Um, so that slides over his hand and clips on his wrist, much like the vintage sword or shield. And then of course he's got this new style sword that looks more like the Filmation sword. Again, this is basically just a reuse of the He-Man figure almost all the way through and through with the exception of that head sculpt. In fact, we can just bring in the other He-Man figure that Super 7 already released so you can see them side by side and that way you can get a good look at them there. In fact, while we're on the subject, it's comparison time. So we did get Robot He-Man recently with our Ultimate Filmation He-Man in Classics. So hey, we can stand these two side by side. I actually think the head is much better sculpted for this Filmation version uh, in the 5.5 scale rather than the Classics version. Pretty neat looking at them uh, next to each other there. And why don't we go ahead and move backwards now. We'll go ahead and stand our Filmation Tila alongside the vintage Tila action figure so you can see how those two differ from one another. And why don't we go ahead and throw her alongside Filmation Tila in the Classics line as well. And that'll bring us to Man at Arms so we can stand our new Filmation figure alongside the mustacheless version from the vintage toy line. And again, standing alongside his Classics counterpart. And finally, let's put Beast Man alongside his vintage figure so you can really see what I was talking about with all the sculpted fur and how different that vintage figure looks. And then again, alongside the Classics version of Filmation Beast Man. So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the new Retro Wave 2 from Super 7. All in all, I really like these guys. So a few things going on here that I, I want to nitpick about. Uh, the plastic is still very, very glossy on these guys. And I don't know why they're so shiny. And I definitely think it looks shinier because of my studio lights. Probably in like normal lighting without these really bright LEDs shining on them. They don't look that glossy. But it really stands out when you put them alongside the vintage toys. Um, also like they, they stand pretty good. Some of the weapons still feel a little too hard and a little too brittle. But overall, I really think these are some fun action figures. I love seeing the vintage toy line kind of continued like this, and it's pretty neat really building out this whole vintage style toy line that's based on the original Filmation cartoon series. So these figures were all picked up from Super7.com via pre-order. However, you could still probably find them on the secondary market. Look for online stores that sell the Super 7 Masters of the Universe product, places such as Big Bad Toy Store. Happy hunting, my friends. Hey guys, thank you so very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Leave me a comment to let me know what you think, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.